రెడ్డి గారు నమస్తే గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎక్కడున్నారు కాలేజీలో ఉన్నాను విజయవాడనా ఓకే ఓకే గుడ్ నిన్న నిన్న చేద్దాం అనుకున్నా మీరు ఇంక జర్నీలో ఉంటారు వెబినార్ ఆన్ implementation of national education policy 2020 at this juncture i show you some of the slides who are uh, part and parcel of this uh, uh, event so department of mba with career guidance cell is conducting this event this is the title of the event and i am introducing myself as convener then he is our co convener then it's supported by sac item sri jay shri kumar sri arun kumar and ajay our student uh, uh, technical expert supported by unify radio the studio where i am in we start with a god's blessings with prayer Thank you, Nagalakshmi. Thank you, Nagalakshmi. So after that, we will be joined by a message from our Honorable Director, Sri Vivi Nageshwara, but he has sent a message. ఆల్మోస్ట్ the government has come up with a new educational policy to meet the current day requirements and to meet the global competition in view of this all the stakeholders should aware about what are the various implications with the national education policy and today's our speaker is Shanil Kumar Yadav uh, the government department the general manager of Reserve Bank of India Chandigarh thank you very much for accepting our invitation to be as a resource person for this one day webinar and i congratulate the patna and can we learn basro co convener and we have exposed to we have exposed to number of workshops already at the same time still lot of things are lent to be by us and it gives more flexibility to the all the stakeholders maybe the students parents and industry also it's a it's a very good workshop i hope people participants will learn many things about the national education policy i hope this program will end up as successful thank you for giving me this opportunity 
now it is the turn of our honorable principal sir to give a message i request i mean sri dr a srinivas ragaru is there with the message good morning everyone i am dr a srinivas rao principal item technically feel happy to for addressing all of you in this occasion it gives me immense pleasure to note that college is organizing a one day webinar on implementation of national education policy on 17th april 2021 i congratulate convener dr c h prasad patnaik department of mba and cook and nursery s baskar babu career guidance cell for taking initiation to conduct this workshop i convey my thanks to today's speaker dr anil kumar yadav garu for accepting our invitation and acting as a resource person for this program you know that new education policy 2020 was announced by government of india recently to revamp the education system in india among the major reforms the 10 plus 2 structure in the school system has been replaced by a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure and undergraduate degree will be either 3 or 4 year duration with the multiple exit and options with this period as a faculty we should know and understand about this policy and i hope that today webinar will cover cover necessary topics thank you one and all wish you all the best thank you very much sir honorable principal sir now i will go with my message so before i go with my message uh, i am let me introduce you our uh, resource person chief speaker dr anil kumar yadav uh, general manager uh, rbi chandigarh so i just uh, go through this profile yes dr anil kumar yadav is currently working as general manager reserve bank of india chandigarh qualified with ugc net exam exams in eight different subjects like economics management commerce labor welfare psychology political science public administration journalism and mass communication he is the limca book record holder twice in the year 2016 and 2020 and golden book of world records holder and india book of records holder for maximum number of pg degrees from most number of universities in india 25 pg courses pg degree holder from 15 different universities in india across 12 states and union territories he holds three graduation degrees and holds the asia book of records for having maximum number of banking certificates from indian institute of banking and finance till date he has 41 certifications from ibf this is a brief introduction of uh, our uh, guest hereby i give a small keynote uh, Uh, on the program the government of india has introduced the dynamic policy of national education uh, focusing on areas of how to bring out or revamp the traditional education system into a more robust form of education to give students and the stakeholders more opportunity to entry and exit and also bring multi talented uh, courses in different arena like a doctor can uh, earn a degree in management simultaneously and uh, pass out with a doctor medicine i mean degree in medicine as well as degree in management so these are the few uh, concepts i want to focus on as a keynote uh, presenter and a convener and that's it i thank aict for giving me this opportunity uh, on behalf of item to convene this program i also uh, very much helpful to the co convener and uh, our uh, the men behind the scene the sap team uh, unify radio as a partner of uh, conducting this program and the young uh, technical people like ajay arun etc so now i request honorable speaker for today's program dr anil kumar yadav ji to kick start the program straight away with the presentation 
I apologize for the technical delay in the program by around uh, 15 minutes. We have to bear with. Uh, thank you so much. So, Dr. Anil Kumar Yadav, sir, you can start your presentation. Okay. Uh, very, very good morning to all of you, uh, especially Dr. Chintamani Pat uh, Patnaik ji, who in fact contacted me for this particular uh, webinar because this is my first webinar uh, which I'll be conducting in the area of education. Uh, the uh, I also thank the director uh, Vivi Nageshwar Rao and uh, the principal uh, Dr. K. E. Shinivas uh, Rao as well uh, for addressing just before the presentation. And I thank all the organizers, in fact, for this particular event, which they have really worked hard. And uh, I hope uh, the webinar could be very interactive. Uh, there's a presentation from my side, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we'll have a bit of uh, uh, interaction as well. Whenever anybody wants to pose a question, he is very, most welcome. And uh, presentations are available everywhere on the net and everywhere, uh, wherever we search for it. But the primary focus of this particular webinar uh, would be the interaction which I would, look, I would like to have with the participants, which are around uh, 63 uh, as of now, who have logged in for this webinar. Uh, thank you very much once again, the uh, Aditya Institute of Technology and Management, uh, Tekali, and uh, the organizers of this event. Now, before going to the presentation, just I would like to uh, uh, ponder about why Indian government or the Ministry of Education has come out with, the, with this new national education policy. Uh, we all know that the constitutional provisions as well, which are there in place uh, in the Constitution of India, they also provide the, the government with some responsibility and onus on the state government as well as the central government to, in fact, uh, have their uh, policies in place which can develop the human resource of the country. For example, Article 45 of the Indian Constitution, it, it talks about right of free and compulsory education. So this Article 45 is, again, very, very important. I think these are the uh, uh, provisions which are there. Uh, due to which the government of India as well as the state governments they have to work hard towards this. Now, if you talk about the quality uh, under Article 21A, uh, that is right to education. Now, this again is the provision which is there in the Constitution of India, which the government has in fact taken into consideration for formulating this policy. And we also have similar provisions for education for women under Article 51, 3, then under Article 46, promotion of education and economic interest of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and other weaker sections, and religion, uh, religious education under Article 25, 28, 1, 2, and 3, and uh, education of minorities, protection of interests of minorities under Article 29. And lastly, Article 30, which talks about the right to education uh, for uh, to establish the educational institutions for minorities. Now, why I gave you this background is re the reason being uh, uh, since 1986, when the first uh, education policy was there by the government, now it has taken almost uh, so many decades to come out with a new education policy. Now, uh, the, uh, why the 1986, uh, the national policy in education, uh, which of course was modified in 1992, and uh, now after so many years, we have uh, this uh, national education policy 2020. What are the reasons behind it? And we'll just try to see the main provisions of this particular uh, policy because in, in, in the interim inter, interim uh, we also had the right of children to free compulsory education act in 2009 now these are some of the provisions of the uh, legalities of this particular education policy and over and above this we also have the sustainable developmental goals which are there by the united nations that is under goal 4 where it talks about the 2030 agenda for sustainable development now india adopted this particular agenda in 2015 uh, which, in fact, uh, uh, seeks to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities. Now, uh, just before I uh, start my presentation, I would like to uh, uh, tell you something about this particular policy. In fact, uh, is going to be a very, very challenging uh, task for stakeholders, whether it, it is the government of India, or the higher education regulators like AICT, UGC, of course, under this new education policy will be revamped totally. And uh, the, of course, the educational institutions, because under the new uh, uh, the national education policy 2020, we have a lot of changes, dramatic transitional changes, transformation changes, uh, which are going to take place. Uh, so 
much. I would like to uh, present. Uh, let me share this uh, particular uh, presentation. And uh, if you are not, uh, if it is, uh, uh, is it uh, visible to you? Are you able to see the presentation? Just, it's coming, sir. It's coming, sir. Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, we will start with this because this particular presentation is. Uh, 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 is it coming? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's coming. Okay. So, are you able to see the first slide? That is uh, National Education Policy 2020. Is it visible to all of you? Uh, I would like to. Uh, this screen. Sir, has to zoom this screen. Sir, you have to zoom this screen, sir. It's only sorry, it's on other window. Sir, you are in another window. You have to open another window. Uh, one second, one second. I have to go to... Uh, I'm presenting. Yes, sir. Is it coming now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's coming now. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So, uh, I think uh, you will not be able to see me, but I think we will run through the presentation. No, sir, so, we are we just, you are able to see the vision yeah, of the... Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if you talk about the nat national education policy, which is there, it talks about the vision of the policy. So, the primary focus of this policy, what is the vision of the policy? You see, any document which has been prepared, because if you uh, look at the consultation which took place in this particular... Uh, formulation of the policy it is very very elaborate. Uh, they say that uh, the overall two lakh suggestions were received from uh, uh, two point five lakh gram panchayats, six thousand six hundred uh, blocks, and uh, six thousand urban local bodies. Six seventy uh, seventy six districts were received. Now, maybe you all also must have contributed to these solutions which uh, they were asking from the stakeholders. So the vision was framed, and the first vision is that. This policy should contribute to an equitable and vibrant knowledge society uh, by providing high quality education. Now, the question some of the uh, scholars as well as the critic critics asked, uh, uh, they, uh, they ask is that, was it not there before the earlier policy? Of course, it was there. But this particular change uh, has to come about by uh, taking into consideration the uh, global environment, the integration of the education system globally uh, because of technology which is there, and uh, the opening of the education sector after 1991. So the primary vision of this policy would be to equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all. Now, if you look at the pandemic, which was there since last year, and of course it is still continuing, now that itself has provided a very good opportunity for all the stakeholders, especially the uh, education technology, which is there, artificial intelligence, which is there. Now, it's, this itself has a created a very, very different type of ecosystem, which is going to help us in future as well. Now, many of the students who are in this particular webinar, they would be attending their class, classes as well as the sessions. Uh, from their homes, the comfort of their homes. Some people are, would be driving, some people would be having their other tasks at hand. So uh, my, my point is that the vision has to undergo change gradually. It cannot be a static vision, and this vision has to be very, very dynamic. Uh, am I able to, um, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Very much audible, sir. Okay. Now, second vision is regarding the uh, to develop a deep sense of respect towards the fundamental rights duties. This was what I was talking about in the beginning. Why this particular vision is there? Because you see, all the constitutional provisions, directive, uh, principles of state policy, they have to be ingrained in this uh, new education policy, uh, the national education policy. So the vision, the, the vision also talks about that we have to really develop a deep sense of respect. Now, this, this respect is, of course, the constitutional values which are there because all these values of constitution, they act as a very, very a strong bonding factor and they, are, they act as adhesive uh, different uh, sections of the society. The third vision is to instill skills, values and dispositories that support responsible commitment on human rights, sustainable development and living. This is what I was talking about that globally now we are integrated in education it is not that we are in silos we, we it's not possible that we can work in silos because as you know a lot of competition private sector educational institutions have come up uh, the government education system is not able to cater to the quality demand which is there for the employers 
for uh, which is demand which is in demand by the foreign players and also the uh, you see the uh, the quality uh, yeah if anybody wants to uh, say something uh, the quality which has to be there of course we have grading of institutions the nfr grading is already there by the government of india so these are the three main uh, visions which are there in this particular education policy now coming to the next particular aspect is regarding the key principles of nep is the slide visible key principles of national education policy uh, is the slide visible sir yes sir yes sir visible yeah now uh, talking about the first principle is respect for diversity and local context now in the new education policy if you've gone through the document they are talking about the local language um uh, many uh, there are problems with the la local language some people say that we do not have the pedagog pedagogy as well as the curriculum which is which which can be developed in such a short duration because this particular document talks about by 2040 we should be totally able to have all these principles in place and so the first principle is that local curriculum local knowledge uh, local resources have to be used and local context ha has to be used to impart education now second is regarding the equity and inclusion again this is a repetition with the, uh, because equality is part of the constitutional right so equity and inclusion uh, nobody should be spared on the grounds of caste creed and uh, race or community so they have to be included in this particular uh, a, a national education policy community participation now this is a very very important uh, uh, you can say a part of this particular policy because earlier if you say most of the uh, expenditure spending was being uh, given by the government of india now gradually the uh, education sector opened up and lot of commercialization also took place uh, because of quality deliverance because of infrastructure uh, upgradation by the uh, institutions now in the new national education policy we talk about the community community participation now this means there are many philanthropic uh, bodies which are there institutions are there private and community participation has also to be there now again every uh, not everybody can uh, be part of this particular uh, process or the development process they have to be graded they have to be quality controlled and but nonetheless everybody should be given an opportunity to help this policy to come into place a technology now uh, we are uh, totally dependent on technology you see we have been forced to adopt technology uh, we have so many different now on this particular platform today on google meet we have google meet we have web uh, webex we have uh, uh, so many other tools which are available um uh, for imparting education so in the new education policy also the national education policy also teaching and learning have to be um by the immersion of technology language barriers uh, they have to be removed uh, by way of technology now we have interpreters we have uh, translators who are doing the job and of course the uh, students who are divyang or who are ch physically challenged mentally challenged they have to be part of this particular national education policy another principle very important principle is to uh, conceptualize understanding you see uh, till now we all have been uh, if you remember those professors who were in part of this particular uh, webinar today uh, we should, if you remember our school days and college days generally it was rote learning uh, we used to uh, scan through previous year's question papers and then come across uh, repetition of those question papers and there of course uh, try to rot that particular and uh, put it out on our answer sheets but now the new national education policy wants that the rot rot learning should go away and it should be uh, conceptualized uh, students should be have a lot of clarity of the conceptions and they also have to uh, identify uh, for each particular student there it, it, the learning process has to be customized the content has to be customized based on the concept concept uh, conceptual understanding and clarity and uh, of course critical thinking creativity has been the hallmark of this uh, uh, national education policy there has to be creativity now this uh, the, one of the main ideas of this uh, national education policy is to make learn how to learn a person has to um, make to understand a, a student has to in fact uh, given those skills and uh, given those uh, uh you know, what to say inputs by which he can learn so learn how to learn is a critical thinking and creativity part of this policy and continuous review as i was mentioning before also the review has to be there and uh, it cannot be static and after 1986 it has been a very very long time 
the national education policy should have been in fact come out well before maybe on a mid 20 years basis of decade basis because any policy to get ingrained in the system of young minds and children and school uh, college going students now you see the uh, most of the children uh, or the um, children who were going into pre primary lower kg upper kg and of course in class 1 they were into this group from age group of 3 to 8 they have been divided into again two parts one is from 3 to 6 in the early childhood care and education and the other one is from 6 to uh, sorry 6 to 8 in class 1 and 2 in primary school now if you look at this now uh, in many of the uh, urban centers or the metropolis or the cities many of the parents want the children to go to school at a very early age maybe 2 and 1/2 years 3 so the government is not in a hurry uh, till class 8 we will be in fact uh, sorry not uh, age 8 the children can only study till class 2 but if you see the current scenario if a child joins the school at the age of 5 by age of 6 or 7 you already been class 2 so the main focus of this particular policy is to lay the foundation strong very very rigorously uh, very very strongly so this is what is the first part there are 3 uh, to 8 uh, again the age group has been divided two parts 3 to 6 and 6 to 8 now again there is a, another aspect of this uh, e double c is the flexible multi level play based activity based and inquiry based learning now if you talk about this we do not have many books we do not have books a book based learning of course the um, fundamental like alphabets num- numericals uh, simple calc- um, addition math- mathematical um, education could be there but it has to be flexible and it has to be multi level depending upon the capability of the student or the children they have to be drafted they have to be implemented and it has to be all activity based and it cannot be rote learning this is the first part and finally we have the preparatory class which is the prior to the age of 5 every child will be moved to a preparatory class or balwatika that is the new concept that is before class 1 which we call it um, upper kg maybe or uh, lower kg or pre nursery or upper nursery so this is different and now this will be called as balwatika so this is the first part of the Uh, education and national education policy which mainly focus on the development of the child till the age of 8 years now uh, uh, coming to the next slide if we talk about the universal access to education at all levels now again if you look at this diagram of the slide we talk about multiple pathways uh, which involves both formal and non formal education modes now this is to provide access and opportunity to all children Uh, we are in, uh, right now talking about the school education uh, because you see there are a lot of quality uh, differences between the education which is being provided at, at the at the current level the current moment in the country so um, maybe we have a uh, lot of competition between even private schools also if you talk about the private schools in the government schools there are a lot of uh, there plenty of uh, inequality between the infrastructure the quality of teachers uh the uh, quality of discipline which is there so now the new national education policy which we talks about that we have to really focus on the retention of the children in the schools so where we we'll try to um, have to develop uh the attractiveness of this uh schools where people are in fact willing to come for example if you remember uh, now we have this mid day meal concept now the mid day meal concept as well why many of the it has been in, uh, found by different ngos which have carried out the study that children generally come to eat not to learn so mid day meal means they will come to that particular uh, place where of course it, they are supposed to study and learn but many of the poor children of uh, poor families they come there just to have food so this is the uh, uh, tragedy of this particular uh, system if you talk about that we do not have the motivation to learn at the village level the poor uh, social strata so um, we have to ensure that students are um, loving to learn they are willing to come to schools so for, so for this it also talks about that the drop out children uh, which are there plenty of them as i told you that many of the schools in the villages many of the parents are forced to take out the children of the schools because they have to help them in the sustainable uh, income in the villages or the uh, suburban areas so government has to build schools now schools again building schools 
only the buildings cannot be there uh, you all we all have visited many rural area schools where they do not have proper drinking facility where they do, do not have uh, proper uh, um, uh, toilets are not there uh, recreation rooms are not there uh, games and game facilities are not there so we talk about building schools by non government philanthropic organizations they will be roped in now why will any philanthropic organization come into this particular system now this the government will really face a challenge unless it is incentivized for them nobody will come on a sustainable basis to build schools into this particular uh, policy uh, because again creating infrastructure developing infrastructure is a huge burden extra on the exchequer as well as the private so i think incentivizing should be a uh, maybe a deliberation has to take place on this now again we talk about alternative and innovative education centers these are all on paper right now i think how the government is going to go about it again there have to be maybe sub committees or uh, stakeholders deliberations have to be there so that they really uh, come out with a uh, implementable policy because the policy is still at the very very nascent stage and we do not know how this is going to pan out in days to come and years to come uh now if you see the first part uh, this is what the government expects and we all also expect because many people have raised apprehensions about this the expected outcomes uh universal uh, universalization of the access and uh, equity inclusion these are uh, all the expected outcomes will be able to achieve the sdg goals sustainable development uh, goals uh, which are there and uh, we also want to improve the quality for this there will be a foundation literacy and numer uh, numeracy fln they want to increase and uh, the skills which are needed for a person to be employable uh, because we all know we are churning out uh, lakhs of degrees in the years but nobody is employable so whether the skills which are going to be taught they will really get an opportunity to work somewhere or they will be in a position to go abroad or they can uh, increase the horizon of, of employment and of course uh, resource sharing again this is a very very complex school complexes have to be developed uh, as you know in india the land laws themselves are creating a lot of issues uh, because uh, the um, for all infrastructure we need plenty of land and the another outcome which we feel is that language will be not a barrier in learning because most of the things which are there right now are either in english or in hindi but locally local language we do not have a much of a development of the pedagogy as well as the uh, material which is there at the lower level so i think this is the main focus of the uh, first part that is school education now how the uh, curriculum and pedagogical structure is going to change now you see this slide are you able to see this slide sir transforming curriculum yes sir there are able okay. to see yeah right so if you look at the slide on the left side we have the existing academic structure on the right side we see the new academic structure now in the first one uh, existing is 2 years this is the curriculum secondary stage we talk about 10 plus 2 and uh, um, again we if you current one is like this 2 years from age to 16 to 18 this is 10 plus 2 and 6 to 16 is 10 years uh, for example if you are studying class Class 10 or State Board or ICSE or AISCE of the CBSC, we have 10 years, then 10 plus 2. Now the change which is going to be um, implemented in the national education policy talks about the new academic structure. You see the foundation. If you look at the bottom of this uh, that particular uh, table stacked up uh, squares and triangles, first is the three years which could be very very uh, important for this particular policy to evolve and develop. unless the 3 plus 2 that lower blue uh, cube which is there if you look at that anganwadi preschool balwadika 3 to 6 and 2 years is because this is the age where your foundation is developed if you uh, if you fail and falter in the first foundation phase the upper blocks will be crumbling they can they will just come down uh, without any support so your base just like a tree when it is developed the roots have to be strong the blue blocks the blue block from 3 maybe age 6 to 8 has to be very very strong because if you look at the psychological or the studies which are there the child's brain generally develops during this period and whatever are his talents whatever are his potentials they generally get ingrained by the environment in which he is put in and by the 
uh, you can say the society, the family, the school, how it is going to uh, if impact the particular development of the human brain or the child's brain. Now, this is the foundation till eight years. Now, coming to the upper green uh, uh, stack, if you say, that is consisting of three years. That is class three to five. Now, this is the preparatory part. Preparatory means you play, you discover, you do a lot of activities, you interact in classroom teaching. Now, most of the things which you find the preparatory stage is generally lacking in the present education system. And only a few of the, uh, because I've been, I've studied in ICSC uh, school curriculum. So there we had a lot of play and activity. But when I shifted, when I found my child to be in CBSE, these activities were lessened, very, very less. So this um, a national edu education policy 2020 focuses on a lot of play, discovery and activity. Now, again, you're telling this to be implemented, but again, to, uh, to develop the manpower or the uh, infrastructure, you again have to focus on their development. Just you cannot bring a teacher and say, please have this play and discovery for the children, unless they themselves come out uh, with their own ideas and how they have to, uh, because this is a very, very formative stage for the child. And if the teacher or the, uh, the resource person who is going to provide this particular learning environment, if he himself is not trained, then that is going to be very, very difficult. Then middle stage again talks about, uh, you can say class six to eight. Again, it is experimental, uh, experiential learning in the sciences, mathematics, art, social science, humanities. Again, big, big, a lot of, uh, I think, innovation is going to take place in this because experiential learning is still not part of the Indian system, education system. Now, for this, again, uh, the teachers have to be trained how to uh, provide the experiential learning. Experiential learning comes out only after you have you yourself have gone and undergone the training or the learning of this experiential learning. I think, again, a parallel infrastructure, a parallel learning environment ecosystem has been developed by the government to, in fact, train these teachers for providing experiential learning. Uh, coming to the last stage, that secondary stage, we talk about the four years where uh, earlier we had um, where 10 plus 2. Now, this is again from 8, from class 9 to 12 will be a single block. That will be a secondary stage where multidisciplinary study, greater, uh, critical thinking, and choice of subjects of flexibility will be provided to the students. So four years, uh, this is why where the child would be or the, um, the ch children would be in a position to, die, uh, to in fact choose their future stream of learning, whether they want to go to engineering, whether they want to go to sports, whether they want to carry out their own research in a particular area later on. This is the very, very critical stage where again, the resource persons have to be very well trained to provide the knowledge and the guidance to the children. So I think am I clear in this particular structure, new academic structure? We start start from the foundation and move up to secondary stage. So actually, it is a four layered structure. It, earlier it was a ten, then plus two, and now it is a four layered structure. And every stage is very very important for the development of the child for its higher level of learning later on. Okay. Now, uh, this is again part of the whole thing. I think I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, touch upon the particular aspect of this because uh, again, NCRT will be drafting the national curriculum and the pedagogical framework for uh, this particular childhood education. And uh, again, they will have to, as I was telling you before, they have to do a lot of groundwork before this particular framework is being implemented. They also talk about national international best practices um, uh, of course, multi-faced framework they have to develop uh, because as I, I was mentioning, we do not have anything right now in the country, especially in the government particular government environment or the government schools. Private schools sometimes they have de tried to develop because they have adopted many best practices from the other countries. And uh, a three-month play-based school preparation module will be developed. So this particular slide talks about how the government is going to uh, develop the infrastructure, develop the knowledge, develop the policies, of, of course, the activities which are to be implemented. And now, uh, coming to the early child education, learning in the formative years, uh, of course, uh, this is, as I was mentioning you, a lot of diverse inequality, diversity and quality issues are there as of now. Uh, if you compare the schools at the um, city level, town level, as well as the government school levels, this particular thing is not happening. But we are trying to have these formative years, formative years, as I was mentioning before, 
talks about between the years of your uh, you can say till eight years. So for that eight years, we have this particular uh, focus. Uh, the idea is to develop curiosity, uh, logical thinking, problem solving, crafts, etc. Music, uh, relationship with nature, uh, shapes, and all. Of course, all these are very very basic things which the child has to be taught at the uh, your formative years. Now coming to the next sl slide, how, how the uh, policy talks about attainment of foundation literacy and numeracy at grade three mission mode. Uh, again, a lot of groundwork has to be done. We have we do not have anything as of now in this particular uh, area like grade three mission mode, early learning, reading and writing, mathematics, national book promotion policy will be formulated by the government, national mission on foundational literacy and numeracy. Uh, of course, this talks about policy issues. What I'm talking about is uh, mentioning in this particular slide is that foundational literacy and numeracy, it has to evolve. It is not at, in place. Again, it is going to be maybe a lot of time is going to take place. And the it also talks about a repository where high quality teaching and learning resources with like Diksha, they call it. It will be developed repository where best practices from different areas of the country or abroad will be uh, shared by this particular uh, area that is Diksha. And libraries have to be, including digital libraries, have to be leveraged upon for this. Uh, this is very, very important uh, part of this uh, national education policy reduction in curriculum. And if you remember, curriculum, uh, this has to be transformed by next year where skill based and uh, minimized rot based learning is there. If you recollect the recent announcements by the government as well, because of the pandemic, many of the a portion of the syllabus they have been reduced. They have been brought down uh, because they feel that in the even in the electronic mode of teaching or IT based teaching, there is, there is an issue of concentration by the children. Even as teachers, also when we teach somebody, you see the um, uh, psychology talk that tells that or the research tells that the attention span of anybody is not more than twenty minutes. Twenty minutes is a very very long uh, time for attention span. So if, even during this presentation, many would, would be finding and not that much attentive at the as you were in part of this particular presentation so my point is that they have to reduce the curriculum and uh, they have to be reduced to reduce the stress the load of the bags of the children are breaking the backs of the children so the bag load has to be reduced so that the children can really uh, focus more on critical thinking thinking they can interact and uh, they have to have experiential learning like fun creation collaborative and all those things so this is a reduction in curriculum part of the policy. Now, uh, competency is a subject integration. This is also part of this um, uh, this thing. Now, what we talk about is uh, focus on the uh, leveraging the uh, operational part of this, where we talk about competency-based integration of subjects. Of course, the, uh, even the new choice-based uh, uh, CBS system, which is there, where children are free to have their own courses for study. and uh, this particular um, slide talks about the integration of subjects where uh, like maybe a sports integration can be done with ICT or ICT could be done with music or maybe mathematics can be integrated with the environment. All those things are there. They're talking about a lot of big, big things in, in this particular area of competencies and subject integration. Let's see how it is going to develop. And of course, multilingual teaching and uh, digital literacy is also part of this. Uh, policy, which is, of course, in days to come, we have to rely on digital literacy. And uh, again, there are many people talk about the disadvantages and the drawbacks of this digital literacy. Uh, they say they are really hooked to their uh, screens of mobiles or laptops or PCs, and physical activities are um, limited. So again, we have to have a balance on this uh, part of it. Uh, we uh, already this is a big issue regarding mental and physical health and well-being. Uh, we have come across many studies which talk about the stress and the mental um, health of the children. Mental health uh, again is a different area altogether. I just uh, finished a deep course in uh, diploma in mental health from IGNU. Now that is a very very important where we uh, in fact are in a position that schools are not able to impart mental health uh, education to children. And uh, so I think this is why, because many children commit suicide, they go into substance uh, abuse, uh, they are overweight, they cannot uh, 
concentrate, they go under depression. So these are all big issues of mental. Earlier, mental health used to be a real stigma for the people or a family. Suppose if we, somebody said uh, he, this gentleman is not having, he's not sound, he's not is mentally sound, and people used to have developed that stigma. So uh, this is again area where government has to focus a lot. Health checkups, uh, reducing of course these uh, school bags will come come down automatically when curriculum is reduced. Health and well wellness, a lot of uh, children have to uh, participate in uh, uh, games, sports, and they will be having counselors maybe appointed. Uh, some of the schools generally have this uh, academic counselors, mental counselors, health counselors, but uh, psychological counselors are there. But I think this is going to be part of this whole system. Okay, uh, of course, this is again uh, taking a cue from the previous slide. We have uh, this is a repetition of that. Equal weight should be given for uh, curriculum and co curricular activities. Uh, nowadays, what is happening? If you are a curricular, if, if you are studying a particular subject, children will be given numerical marks in the subject, whereas co curricular activities will be grades A, B, C, D, like that. So there should not be any separation between that also. This is what. And children should be free to choose a variety of subjects and combine them with their own choice of subjects. And uh, art, sports, and storytelling has to be part of this. OK, sir. Uh, is it clear till now? I, I, I do not know whether am I running too fast or too slow. No, no. It okay? It's OK, sir. It's OK. You're uh, yeah. no, no. No issue. You're doing very well. Fine. OK, thank you, sir. Now, coming to the, again, this is part of the whole uh, school education. Because as I was telling you before, the school education, the foundation of any child, and the child has to uh, be really um, taught well. He has to really inculcate all the uh, qualities which later on uh, he, has, he has to develop in a good human being. Okay, sir, this is again, I'll not uh, spend much time on this. Talks about the repository which has to be there and NCRT, how it is going to develop the textbooks and the local content and flavor. And of course, yes. this is again going to be a challenge. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're saying something or? Uh, no, no, no. Just go ahead, sir. Right. Now, how it is going to help India? Uh, they say that India's future and India's leadership role in the upcoming fields can be attained by developing uh, all these uh, mathematics, uh, computers, uh, contemporary subjects which are evolving. All these things they are going to include in the uh, new national education policy. Computational thinking, of course, India is uh, having an edge over this particular uh, area. We have, uh, you, you all must be knowing, Many of the engineers and technocrats in the US and the Western countries, they are Indians. Even NASA, which is there, I think they say more than 60, 40, uh, uh, more 40 percent of the uh, scientists and engineers are from India. So we have already had this leadership role in uh, these areas like competition, th computational thinking, mathematical thinking and problem solving. And of course, these are all part of this uh, uh, new national education policy. Uh, this actually has evolved. Uh, you can see after the uh, national uh, sustainable development goals were also made part of the whole system of education after 2015 when India signed the uh, SDG. Uh, knowledge of India, of course, uh, we have uh, to have uh, knowledge of our own state, our country, our value systems, our culture, everything they're talking about this in, in this policy. And uh, this will be uh, in a scientific manner, we have to develop our own indigenous and domestic knowledge base which is there so the, what, what they're talking about everybody has to be told the ethics of everything the culture of our country and the state wherever they live and also uh, they have to be provided training and uh, about good nutrition public hygiene civic sense all those things they're talking about and how what are the detrimental and damaging effects of alcohol tobacco and drugs uh, which will be part of the curriculum because uh, I remember we used to have a moral science uh, class earlier, you know, school days in my school. So there we used to have, be told about how to respect a uh, girl, how to have, uh, how to, uh, in fact, respect our parents and how not to uh, get into all this indulgence of uh, drugs, alcohol, tobacco. So that, that, that used to be there in our part. But of course, it was now it is going to be part of this whole system. Now, what is, how the examination they are going to uh, have it. Uh, learning outcomes when it call about the um, key stage assessment will be there. Uh, there have to be assessment at key stages from class three, five, and eight to track achievement. This will be census assessment. It, it could not be a mark based. It could be grades like that. And uh, moving away from rote learning, this is very very important because 
uh, we have to have uh, this policy in place when, uh, unless we have this rote learning still this policy cannot be implemented and achievements of our learning outcomes there will be tests to focus on the achievements of essential learning outcomes again a lot of work has to be done a lot of groundwork has to be done in this examination sorry evaluation and examination part and results will be are uh, used only for development purpose and not and only for continuous monitoring and improvement of the schooling system they cannot there may not be uh, children who would be uh, claiming that i have come first or top the examination it will be it it, it the uh, examination only will be uh, continuous monitoring and improvement of the schooling system so this is the evaluation part we are talking about and again similar to uh, your uh, uh, higher level 9 to 12 that is the uh, your top level they are also uh, there are with their viable beginning with max all subjects could be offered in two levels so maybe uh, level 1 level 2 depending upon the capacity and the competency of the child suppose if there are two levels of mathematics level 1 level 2 level 2 could be of for children who are very very good at maths uh, level could be of the children who only require basic mathematical uh, knowledge so i think this is how they are going to develop and the board exams will be made easier as they will be test primarily core capacities and competencies and models have to be developed for conducting maybe objective type and descriptive questions and depending upon this uh, there could be two parts one part could be objective of course this we have even the online system of examination which i think many of the universities are organizing even you would have conducted online exam generally they are objective type because again uh, this is very very easy and your conceptual clarity should be there on objective and teachers have to prepare for a transformation in assessment system by next year academic year this is 2022 so again i think work is already, work has already started on this area and many teachers have to be trained for preparing this assessment system by next year and uh, the each school and board have to ensure that equivalency of standards is there in learners uh, if you remember uh, we had this moderation system uh, in different uh, universities earlier where suppose a person tops in cbsc and a person from a state board which does not allot uh, award good marks they would be moderated they would be brought at par so this new education policy also talks about uh, the well, you can say the standard academic standards so that there can be some equivalency which can be set into the system and of course standards and norms guidelines for school boards have to be uh, through parak national center again this is a new word which is there parak of course is again assessment ki parak na kisi ko okay sir so, so this is again regarding the 9 to 12 a uh, culture culture of assessment continuous tracking will be there ai based software will be developed to track the progress of the students a lot of things they are talking about in this and nta is already there which conducts ugc net and other exams nowadays uh, the national testing agency will work high quality common aptitude test for taking coaching classes and all maybe government themselves may, may rope in the nta to develop some coaching modules for the uh, technical education um, preparation so national assessment center Uh, will have to bring this is all the quality talk uh, what i'm talking about the assessment part and how they are going to come about come uh, come out with this particular thing now the result now as we are as talking about we have marking and grades in different areas of evaluation now the progress card would be holistic and the, all the states have to re redesign their progress card and uh, they have to be holistic and 360 degree multi dimensional report that means if a child has knowledge of some area of language of culture that has also to be reflected in this so it will be a holistic progress card and uh, this card um, of course will be uh, for his development as a human being more than the development of the knowledge and the knowledge of the uh, subject of or mathematics or something else it 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 has to reflect the progress of his uh, cognitive learning uh, emotional socio economic uh, socio emotional connect or psychomotor domains where he has developed so again this is a very very new area which we have to understand how the policy makers or implementing agencies have to come out i uh, just to move uh, before i move uh, further you see this is a uh, vision you can say this is a vision which the government has put across to all of us now to formalize and to uh, the to give a shape to this uh, vision lot of hard work is still needed lot of hard hard work still needed it is there is no magic wand where uh, bus uh, uh, you have to just uh, 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 put the band and everything it come into place lot of in, in investment is needed uh, plenty of uh, this thing is needed now multilingualism we are all having lot of discussion in newspapers and everywhere on the channels as well how the three language formula will be there 
and state has to be of course a lot of opposition was there from the southern states uh, uh, in some uh, northeastern states as well regarding this particular area uh, medium instruction up to grade 5 and till grade 8 will be home language mother tongue local language uh, because uh, government is uh, in fact uh, suggesting that if uh, the many of the developed countries like japan china etc or german germany as well they are only teaching in their home language english is not the medium of language so if they can uh, be world leaders in knowledge and society why india can't be in the, the language but the problem with india is that we have multiple languages even japan is only one japanese so this is a very very important uh, aspect which we have to take into consideration but nonetheless the language of india there will be a project of activity based where people will be taught different languages and children will also have the op uh, option of having classical languages uh, now how this is how the infrastructure is going to be put in place by the national education policy school complexes clusters bal bhavan will be there all these are samajik chetna kendras sharing resources will be there and of course uh, planning short term long term planning has to be come out now this bal bhavan is basically the uh, children of all age groups to have art related career related and play related activities and samajik chetna kendras of course introspection of intellectual development spiritual development all those uh, things will be there in this and twinning pairing of one government school with other private school can also come up that is called pairing of schools where the one government school may tie up with another private school which is good and they they can share their knowledge in other ways so uh, this is uh, also part of this whole policy and of course better integration of education across all the levels is also planned in this national education policy and uh, now this is again standard setting and accreditation how uh, there are a lot of bodies which are proposed to be created in this one is the state school standard authority the other one is uh, self disclosure of all regulatory information has to be will be made mandatory as ugc is right now doing and uh, we also have they are talking about the school quality assessment and accreditation framework sqaaf by state uh, research education and research and training establishment scrts and ncert so this particular slide talks about the standard setting where all schools will follow minimum professional and quality standards right now we do not have any uh, standard as such for the schools to follow and only the maybe district education officer visits visits the schools and looks at the infrastructure or the quality which is there but education the teaching quality or the uh, delivery quality is not there as of now uh this is very very important for uh, of course the faculty members who are present in this webinar as well as the uh, students who propose or who plan to go for teaching days to come this is uh, for the school teacher education there will be a four year integrated of course this is already there and uh, we already have two year bed as well one year bed i do not know uh, i have not seen one year bed earlier it used to be there somewhere but now it is only two year bed or four year integrated course so minimum degree qualification for teaching in the schools will be required by 2030 that means four year integrated degree has to be uh, developed for teacher education and uh, by 2030 they have to move to multidisciplinary colleges and universities then two year bed for applicants with an existing bachelor of course this, this is already there i am not going to touch upon this much but what I, what they are talking about is that teacher have to be trained they have to have the minimum qualification for teaching which is already there right now okay sir so all bed programs will include training in time tested techniques of course the uh, the level of teaching of teachers will also go up this is a they talk about the skills which are needed for a teacher to develop okay sir so uh, maybe shorter duration trainings programs modules could be developed for uh, the specialized areas of teaching like uh, uh, music art agriculture sports carpentry etc so vocational teaching can vocational areas can also be imparted for teachers training now improving the uh, quality of teaching teacher uh, education uh, they are talking about that nta testing for admission to bed of course nta is there now at, at present what is happening we have both the modes of bed nc nct provides uh, affiliation or permission to the colleges who can offer even distance like ignu offers bed through distance education and uh, we already have south indian earlier we used to have uh, plenty of uh, south indian universities used to offer bed through distance education that has been reined in now so i think some quality of course improvement has taken place but uh, when they will re uh, replace the national higher education and regulatory council like we have plenty of regulators like ugc is there nct is there aict is there 
and of course uh, pharmacy law and all everything is being regulated but national higher education regulatory council uh, will func function as a single point regulator for higher education sector including teacher education so i do not know how much time they will take because previous governments have tried to bring out this uh, regulatory council or the body but till now they have not succeeded so i think this is how they are going to improve the teacher education in the country uh, we will not touch, touch upon this uh, how they will recruit and deploy again um, this is, most of the things are already there uh, for example if you want to become a school teacher you got to have a ba or if you want to teach a plus 2 level students you already you should have ml so this is already there and uh, transfer there will be transfer system the transference transparency will be there uh, for information some states already have this system online transfer policy like uh, navodaya vidyalaya kendriya vidyalaya they already have this particular module in place where the uh, the teachers can apply for online transfers it's quite transparent empowering teachers uh, i think uh, technology based uh, there there will be something called national professional standard for teachers by 2020 they are developing this particular standards so this will uh, empower the teachers and uh, thereafter teachers uh, teachers can also be uh, leadership position they will be offered if they are having those qualities and all so i think this is uh, all about the school uh, leadership teachers and all okay bro yeah yes sir i think i have crossed the time uh, i do not know whether we should take some questions because i'll just share this document with the uh, mr patnaik and yes, sir. Yeah, ah, I will send you the document, sir. You will send it to my mail ID. Ah, I will send you this across because I have short the time. It is very very interesting actually, and uh, but uh, I have short the time. Very sorry for that. But no, no sir, you can go ahead for uh, by briefing that because that is the actual key point that is needed for higher education. So you can, sir, again you can focus on that also because so we, I just, what I will do, I will go to the higher education part now. Uh, just before that, uh, this online and digital education slide. Are you able to see this slide? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Okay. You, you can go ahead. You can take your yeah. time. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. this when we talk about the online digi digital education, we already have this swim right now, where many of the credit based uh, credit based uh, or credit choice uh, subjects are available, and uh, they are planning to come out with the existing system, which is there. Uh, like Diksha is there, Swim is there. and uh, i think many of the iits they have tied up with the uh, swayam and other bodies to come out with uh, plenty of courses which are of very high quality so in the uh, inclusion and access the the new national education policy feels that they have to leverage on this without leveraging on the online the digital we have to have uh, life skills which are there which have to be obtained gradually and continuously through continuing education so i think the the uh, traditional modes of education only for through class based learning or college based learning is going to undergo a tremendous amount of change when this policy comes into place uh, now coming to the uh, i think i'll uh, this is uh, our child i'll go to the uh, our higher education part and because uh, this is going to elaborate i think we have lot of portions are there in this Sir, you can you can elaborate a bit because that is uh, we need the higher education. All the stakeholders need that. So please elaborate, sir, because uh, uh, the stakeholder, the student, the management, everyone wants to know that. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, wait, sir, wait one second. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh i think uh, higher education portion i do not have the slide with me should i just talk about it if you are not uh, averse to that you can talk sir you can talk sir you can go yeah ahead. yeah anyway you want to ha ha uh -huh. now uh, regarding the higher education they talk about uh, the uh, after adolescence the adolescents when they move uh, from the uh, schooling system to higher education they play an extremely important role uh, in promoting humans as well as societal well being so the uh, some of the major problems which are being faced by the higher education in the country include uh, like a fragmented higher education ecosystem fragmented means uh, we do not have a suppose you are also running an institute or a college or a management institute 
you sometimes you have to have the uh, approvals from different different regulatory bodies there is not a single window where you can go and put up your application for any approval or uh, the uh, re re regulatory sanctions now this is one very big problem which i think the national education policy is going to handle another is uh, there is less emphasis on the development of cognitive skills and learning outcomes of course uh, changes have taken place over the period of time but the government uh, feels that still lot of emphasis is uh, needed to develop the cognitive skills of the children or the uh, adult learners or the uh, uh, children who are uh, um, migrating from the school level to university level then there is a rigid separation of disciplines with early specialization and streaming of students into narrow areas of study now rigid separation in disciplines suppose if you now mba a person who is doing specialization in finance now if he wants to do a specialization in some uh, social science subject maybe he wants to do specialization in economics as well i think that is not possible am i right he, can he do it dual or triple specialization if he wants he, if he has the capability uh, that is not i think allowed as of now so this is another uh, rigidity is there which the uh, uh, framers of this policy have emphasized then we also have this uh, uh, socio economically disadvantaged areas Uh, with very high education institutions where, uh, which which are not there in that uh, uh, disadvantages areas then limited teacher and institutional and autonomy the, the, what i'm talking about the major problems in higher education a limited teacher and institutional autonomy now even at the im level also indian institute of management through the act they brought out lot of changes but till now You, you must have been reading in newspapers also a lot of friction is there between the iams as well as the government or the higher education authorities or the regulators so this is also a problem with the new education policy may like to um, remove then inadequate mechanism for merit based career management is also lacking uh, ineffective regulatory system and uh, another problem is uh, large affiliating universities uh, resulting in low standards of undergraduate education affiliation again is a very very big issue in this thing now i'll just uh, talk about the vision of this policy with regard to changes in the higher education it talks about uh, to move forward uh, uh, to forward in multidisciplinary universities and colleges what it talks about is that suppose a university is there it has to be in a position to offer multidisciplinary uh, uh, courses as well as Uh, at different levels and also they say that the instructions have to be in local indian languages now they are taking a cue from the uh, your secondary education to the higher education that emphasis has to be in the local and the indian languages because the children who would be evolving from the uh, secondary and the lower level they would already be having this advantage of local language so once they have this particular grip over the local language and when they come to the higher education system they will be in a position to grapple with the language problem but suppose they have studied in local language and all of a sudden at a college level or university level they are being taught in english so that will be a huge problem for them that is what they feel and uh, the policy also talks about faculty and institutional autonomy of course this autonomy is uh, going to be a very huge challenge uh, because all the institutions want autonomy nobody wants in fact to be regulated nobody wants to be chained by the authorities because uh, as you know this uh, the whole system is again a cyclic system where problems at one level lead to problems at the other level so the policy says that we have to have institutional autonomy and uh, as you know we already have this uh, uh, educational institutions of eminence where many of the uh, they have been given total autonomy for developing the curriculum developing the degree structure and everything uh, except for the uh, regulatory Uh, some controls are there otherwise they are totally uh, aut autonomous and uh, the uh, the uh, also uh, the uh, the new education policy also to uh, talks about the national research foundation uh, this foundation will in fact fund outstanding peer reviewed research and also to activate actively seed research in universities and colleges uh, this is very very important in the sense uh, when we are ranked by global uh, ranking bodies maybe if it is the times ranking or if it is uh, your uh, quality that uh, uh, so many national level rankings are there generally fall because of research quality and peer reviewed research peer reviewed articles in uh, different journals 
so government is going to create this foundation where it is going to fund uh, of course the funding part is not clear where the fund will come from maybe some portion will be from philanthropical or private sector or some portion will be uh, contributed by the government budget so this is another area where the new education policy uh, is talking about the, then governance of the higher uh, educational institutions by highly qualified independent boards having academic and administrative autonomy uh, in universities or in your uh, particular institute also now there are bas basically boards are there but they are for different areas maybe academic board is there examination board is there or a committee is there but yes. the, uh, the national education policy talks about independent boards which will be having academic and administrative autonomy now the constitution of the boards will be uh, again a lot of things have to be uh, um, discussed about this he, uh, how they are going to uh, in fact uh, choose the members of the boards then of course light but tight regulation uh, by a single regulator for higher education which i think i have already touched upon they talk about the higher education uh, the regulatory body which is going to replace everything uh, in fact uh, 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 the ugc aict and ct everything will be replaced and we only will only have uh, this thing uh, uh, the higher education commission which will be there right now uh, another area where they're focusing about is uh, uh, increased access to odl online education and open distance learning uh, will be will have to be integrated with the traditional form of teaching or uh, learning so these are some of the basic areas where they're talking about uh, multidisciplinary education and holistic education and uh, the environment the learning environment have to be developed so that uh, the uh, students get support and uh, uh, this thing financial support is also provided uh, one thing which i think you would be interested to know the financial support to students it would be in the form of um, various measures like uh, they will be incentivize the merit of students belonging to scs ubc and uh, other categories then national scholarship portal will be expanded to support foster and track the progress of students and uh, private higher education institutions will be encouraged to offer large number of free ships and scholarships to their students now again this is a gray area uh, why private uh, higher education institutions will offer large number of free ships again they have to develop uh, some model where the students have to be rated or they have to be uh, categorized who all will get and who all will not get so i think these are the major um, areas i think which could be uh, of your importance and uh, in higher education they are also uh, talking about the uh, the uh, gross enrollment uh, uh, ratio which has to be increased in uh, gradually by 2040 and uh, the uh, uh, vocational education system uh, they have to be in fact integrated with this particular area so i think the uh, regulatory system of higher education it requires a lot of uh, innovation and uh, uh, the uh, NRF, which is there, I think NRF will carefully coordinate with other funding agencies. Uh, so research foundation, what they're talking about, uh, this research foundation, uh, this will be uh, overarching goal of the, will be to enable culture of research. Because research, I think, in government fields uh, will be fund-based and all disciplines and the successful research will be recognized and they have to be implemented through close linkages with government agencies and industry. So I think there will be private philanthropic organizations and they will partner with the government to carry out the research. I, th I think this is uh, okay with you, sir. Otherwise, uh, what we'll do, I'll try to share the uh, other part of the document which I have and uh, so that you can share with the participants. Yeah. Yes, sir. We are waiting. Yes, uh, I have uh, a question from Dr. D. Vishnumurthy. Uh, D. Yes, presentation because I think uh, presentation would be uh, take a lot of time. We'll just have take some questions, sir. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, then we'll try to uh, uh, maybe wind up or we'll have another time to discuss. No, we have time, sir. We have time, sir. So, Professor D. Yeah. Vishnumurthy, sir, welcome, sir. His question is Is it possible for a unified syllabus all over? I think that is the question he has posed. Uh, at what level? You, at what level you are talking about? When you talk about school, it it is possible because uh, we already have CBSC at the national level, ICSE syllabus at the national level. Yes, so school level, it is possible. 
Any level, because you see, even when we are preparing a syllabus for MBA right now, that syllabus is generally approved by AICT, which has to be followed by everybody. So that unified syllabus is already there in existence. For example, if you talk about the uh, B Ed course or the uh, uh, the uh, the net courses, which is prepared by UGC, they're uniform. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're uniform, isn't it? So yes. it is possible, but implementation part will be a bit difficult because it takes time for any transformation and implementation to take place. But we already have experimented with the national syllabus of school, CBSC, yes. ICS, are already national level schools which are unified. But there is a divide. There is a divide that some of the schools accept ICSC, some of the schools have accept CBSC. So what our yes. sir suggested that uh, is asking that in school level is it possible and is the state government going to accept that? Yeah, yeah. This is a very very important part which I think uh, there will be a lot of differences. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Because the existing uh, infrastructure which is there in state level, state boards are there, examination boards are there at the state level, and ICSC and CBSC they themselves are different. As I was telling you in the uh, part of my presentation, I myself, uh, my schooling is from ICSC based school. Yes, sir. When I shifted for plus two in uh, CBSC, there were a lot of changes. Lot of changes. In ICSC, children, they are put in so that they get quality English education. You yes, see, ICSC schools generally, they do not focus much on math, science, etc. They focus on your holistic and curricular, co-curricular activity development. Yes, sir, so, yes, sir. Uh, that that is what he's talking about in the national education policy. They are integrating both the good points of both the boards. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. you see experiential learning, which is there, that is part that was part of ICSC. Most of them, they were, that was not available in CBSE. CBSE it was available only as an optional later on, not at okay. the initial stage. Mm -hmm. So it will take time because anything which is new, uh, people have to be convinced because okay. conviction comes and only they will adopt. So Change. lot of here, as I was telling you before, and uh, so this is uh, my take on particular unified syllabus or uniform syllabus. Yes, sir. And uh, just to uh, mention about it, they have also given a lot of freedom in incorporating local local issues, local cultures, local uh, uh, sorry, local knowledge which is there, domestic knowledge, indigenous knowledge that can also be made part of this whole system. That freedom is already there. There's no issue in that. So when the suppose maybe could be. Mm, 80% of the whole syllabus is unified of the country, 20% could be of localized. So that will be that can also be an option. Okay. Yeah. Now, actually, people are not prone to change. A sudden change is also resistance. There's a lot of uh, I think uh, see, that is human psychology. As I told you before, till the age of eight, when they are talking about the foundation. If your mind is ingrained or if it is modified, it's like it is like a clay. If you want to make some um, pottery out of clay, the clay has to be very, very much. Uh, uh, yes. it, it, it should not. It, yeah, it should. It should. It should be in a position to be molded or changed. So that is coming at the base level. So uh, as I was mentioning, you the challenge with the new policy is how you are going to create the teachers and the service providers or the knowledge providers at the base level. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. At the base level, if you are not able to develop that uh, manpower to develop the children, your policy is not going to uh, succeed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Any, any, anything else? Yes. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Somendra Das. I am just reading out. He has posted. Can we make compulsory foreign language in higher education? You see, nothing is compulsory in this education policy, I think. A lot of bouquet of uh, languages, bouquet of uh, subjects uh, which are there. Like, suppose if you talk about mental health and spirituality. If I'm interested in learning spirituality, I should be given the freedom to learn it. So that way, if I'm uh, willing to learn a language, there's no harm in learning a language. So that is going to be the discretion of that particular child or the uh, school. And it should be in a position to offer that particular choice or the discipline to that a child when he wants to learn there is no uh, what to say there is no bar or there is no control over the uh, mental faculty development in the national education policy so if you want to learn language french japanese or whatever language they can learn that yes, is sir. there okay so there is a question still from dr vishnumurthy that ap andhra pradesh government has planned to implement cbse syllabus compulsory 
is it good is it advisable as per your knowledge <laughs> uh i do not know they they would not have done it on their own there would, would have been some committee or recommendation by some policy makers there unless i know the background of the implementation because any change in the education system requires lot of planning and uh, policy um, courage so uh, political courage so i do not know what is the background of that and no syllabus is good or bad no board is good or bad it's the enforcement and the quality of teachers which are there and how you are implementing it so i'm not saying cbc is good or bad every syllabus even the state board students they top the civil services examination they do very well outside even if they studied mathematics and all in hindi language yeah. so i'm not i i do not want to comment on the uh, suitability or the uh, not non suitability of a board uh, whatever the government has done there they could have done it out of some compulsion or out of some recommendation of a committee that i'm not sure yeah yes any more questions somebody is asking is open book system i do not know somebody was there some question yes sir uh, dr lalita bhavani madam from yes department she is suggesting is open book system a good or conventional examination system yeah it is uh, it's already there actually if you see the uh, latest uh, i stay in chandigarh right now we have a punjab university which was holding the online examination Yes, so the questions were uploaded. Students used to download, and of course, uh, I do not know how many students would have written on their own. It was totally open book. <laughs> it was open book because they will open the book, write the examination, upload it, scan it, and upload. Of course, they can they cannot verbatim, they cannot uh, word by word, they cannot copy, but of course, they can see the uh, book and write. There are many examinations in law. I remember, uh, especially this. Uh, uh, yes, they have a certification yeah, where they allow to carry the open books. many foreign universities they have the open book system even to copy or to write from open book is also a skill If everybody cannot write the right answer from the book <laughs> you do not know on which page unless you have studied that book you simply cannot write it within the limited time but new the uh, pandemic has opened up a new plethora of opportunities where students have been using open book right so of course that is an ethical part of a student how he does but open book system is there all over the country uh, sorry all over the world various examining examining bodies are allowing open book system i know about law law there is a open book you yes, can carry it law system is like that only yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> law degree is almost like that not everywhere any very amazing question by professor dr das there are many private schools who don't have qualified teachers still they are permitted by government can you make a standard for private schools standard is already there you see standard is already there for both government and private i do not know what standard uh, 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 somendra is asking standard could be of the teachers it could be of infrastructure now okay. teachers there are guidelines where without bed or dled they cannot teach suppose they cannot teach and i do not know if the quality of standard is there the teacher standard has to be emphasized emphasized uh, that is uh, by way of your uh, qualification only but if the qualification itself will not bring out standard I, the system in our the problem with our uh, system of education is that if a person does not get a government job or any good job maybe civil services or any um, job of his choice he generally goes into teaching that is the impression in the country so if he goes into teaching especially the school level teaching suppose if you ask somebody why you became a teacher he will not say i love teaching he will say agar udhar i did not get the job so as force i was lose uh, i was about to cross my age so i joined a teaching so that is not his passion teacher has to have passion without passion a teacher is not a good teacher yes yes if you have a passion quality will automatically come if i have so many degrees or educational qualifications that means if you do not have passion you will they will not be utilized anywhere this is my way of thinking so quality of teacher has to be ensured by the employer government what i think it is written that uh, we don't have qualified teachers now again qualified teachers can be uh, employer suppose i am having a school i am uh, asking for applications the i'll only look at the educational system, qualification or experience whether the teacher has got experience or not so if that teacher fulfills all these two then i will take him as a teacher of course interview will be there to judge his quality of uh, um, uh, communication level etc but otherwise if his papers are degrees are clear then he is a fully qualified teacher but quality we cannot ensure by qualification 
And he has mentioned that uh, uh, is there any way to test the passion of a teacher? Our sir, Professor Vishnu. Yeah, there are many psychological testings which are there where uh, teachers' inclination to teach, a teacher's passion for teaching are there. Many tests have been developed at MED level, at PhD level by psychologists where teachers' interest can be developed, uh, can be tested. That is there. Yes, yes. Lot of lot of tests are there. Like the psychometric tests are there. Ah, yes. psychometric tests are there. With different uh, you are uh, uh, even teaching uh, skills which are needed. Those uh, those tests are also there. Behavioral dynamic tests are also there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. tests are there where you can develop. But again, a person can fool you also sometimes in those tests. That is very very difficult. So you have to have multiple level of tests. <laughs> Some concept called acting is there. No? Those are yeah, the yeah. yeah, maturity level has. Uh, it, it depends. If he's really sincere, he will not indulge. But you cannot. Be sure. Yeah. Anything else, sir? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I I have a question. It actually ah, uh, it took a very long time. Uh, why it took a long time? It is a political issue. I hope because the education had taken a back seat for long mm -hmm. time because they still thought that uh, uh, the tradition should go on, right? Mm -hmm. then, uh, all of a sudden, this dynamic change. How is India going to brace with this new change? Because we see different accreditation uh, like the Washington Accord, the Abbott, all these things are there. Then again, we have the NRF, then we have the NAC, NBA, so many things are there. We are uh, a college management is uh, what you can say facing multi dimensional challenges for getting accreditation, then getting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, then again, this another dynamic change. How is, the, how is India going to brace this? Uh, Cyclone of change, or what you can say, tsunami, cyclone, you can say any language, or a uh, bouquet of changes. How we are going to brace as far as stakeholders are concerned? Because mm -hmm. as I said, that you are going to highlight the uh, position of the stakeholders so far as students, uh, the parents, and the college management and the faculties. So please highlight that. My question. I think you're, you're, uh, what you're talking about is uh, how we are going to adopt this change or how the changes which are proposed in the national education policy are going to be implemented, right? Yeah, yeah. Now you see, uh, after 1986, uh, there was a committee in 15 which talked about uh, under Dr. T. S. R. Subramanian. Then they started a consultative process to bring out this policy. Yes, so it's almost uh, six, seven years when this draft uh, report was put up in 19 and then it was released last year. Mm. Now the point is any change which has to take place, whether it is uh, the government mindset or the stakeholders mindset, it will take time okay. because we are all acting, uh, we are all mature people and uh, diverse people. It's not that what I say is will be accepted by you. It's not a dictatorial regime in the country. So any change has to come by the uh, role and uh, you can say the intention of the people who are going to implement it. Unless we are prepared for that, the change will not take place. As somebody was, you were, I think somebody was mentioning, no, there is resistance for change. Yeah, and uh, so I resistance is very, very natural. For example, suppose if you are allotted a new, you, you must be staying in a campus of your college. Even yes. if you are told to go to a big bungalow in your uh, campus, you will resist for some time. No, 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 my small house is good. Whereas you, you, you may be having all the facilities and provisions in the new bungalow. You'll also demand, you will also get social respect camps staying in a bungalow, but again, you'll have a small resistance. Even if you are willing, your children may not be like to, may not like to shift. Willing and no, 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 no. We have all the facilities here. Uh, what will we do in a big uh, room, uh, big bungalow going there? So any change, no, it will be resisting. People will resist, but this resistance have to be overcome by incentivizing the policy. Incentivizing means suppose if you are uh, not shifting to a big bungalow. Your incentive to be know your electricity will be made free in that bungalow, then we'll go. Right? Because you're saving something. So, what I'm talking about here is that any change which has to be implemented, that has to be incentivized, and negativity has to be brought down to a great level by involving the whole population, the whole all the stakeholders. I cannot call population, but all the stakeholders, like private education system, the government education system, the regulatory bodies, etc. You are perfectly right saying that you have to run. Uh, pillar to post in getting accreditations and other approvals. Okay. That is why they're talking about a single regulator. Maybe they could do, they could have a single window system where all your accreditations and approvals are granted by that particular regulator. 
so i think these changes take a lot of time to come uh, 1947 after 1947 we did not have much changes in the education policy so this is one dramatic change but of course a lot of critics are also there and uh, what i personally feel is funding will be a great great challenge for this and developing the people who are going to implement this the skills skill sets which are needed for teachers for the uh, lower level foundation level uh, foundation stage teachers will be very very difficult for the government the change has to take place it cannot be 100% but even if it is maybe 50 60% also then we can see the change we can feel the change yes change has taken place then again there is the valuation of degrees uh, single year one degree again another degree so this uh, bifurcation of degrees will cause uh, mm. a lot of problem to uh, people who are going to take them yeah so, we gradually yeah, will will accept the change you know you see even in our, in our time uh, when i was studying in college there were two types of degrees which were being offered one was two year degree the other was three year degree yes yes right So yes, two-year degree means you are eligible for job. Three years also you are eligible for job. But yes, three years bachelor's degree, you are not eligible for two years bachelor's degree. You are not eligible for MA uh, post graduation. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So yes, people yes. used to have that system as well. We had two years plus if you want to do uh, post graduation, you you had to do bridge course for one year. So that yes, bridge course used to be there. So once the system falls into place, people will start accepting. If you remember now, this four-year uh, graduation degree we are talking about, Delhi University already had implemented this, but right. somehow they had to, uh, they had to uh, drop drop it uh, because of so many pressures and uh, people could not accept the change. So my point is, once things start, people people means what? Children have to, students have to accept it because they are the beneficiaries of this uh, whole system. We are the, uh, in fact, we are the providers of this. uh in, in we are the ingredients or the catalytic agents to provide the policy to them so once they accept it there is no issue with them and employers should be able to accept it even now also you see many degrees are there where persons are doing integrated courses they have an exit option suppose if a person gets admitted in uh, uh, llm yes yeah llb llm for how many years he has to study 3 years graduation 2 uh, years llb 3 uh, 2 years llm almost 7 8 years so if you but he wants to quit then he can quit after graduation he can quit after llb it's like that and but even now any of the courses of ignu i know where they have this yes. post graduation courses i was MA, to... there is oh. one ma distance education if you do one year you will get pg diploma in distance education you can exit that course so that is already there now they are going to formalize in the whole system here yeah. that is actually there that is there in the management stream also Yes, yes. Marriage we get diploma before we get the MBA. Yes, yes. They have diploma, diploma, postgraduate diploma in specialization, the postgraduate diploma in management, then MBA. So almost three diplomas you get before you get the MBA degree. So that is already there. The exit system is already there. Yeah. So yes, there is there is a question again that what are the scheme for dropout students by Mr. Das? Ah, uh, yeah. Dropout students, you see, either they could be taken to vocational system. or they could be taken to like uh, i remember we already have this in the banking system one uh, institute is there which is called rct rural self employment training institute so in those institutes they are provided vocational training like uh, tailoring repairing uh, then your uh, uh, electrical uh, ac repairing training mobile repairing training so most of the dropouts can be taken to those type of uh, skill development institutes where the hand uh, hand uh, you can say practical based or uh, job oriented based trainings are given and then they are linked to the banks they are given credit by the banks to the, these particular uh, children or youths who are dropouts from schools and then go to that rct rural self employment training institute so that type of uh, development uh, that type of uh, 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 you can say infrastructure has to be created maybe within the school ecosystem or outside the school ecosystem that is one way out of uh, bringing back to them for employment or skill development other could be incentivizing the dropouts uh, dropouts uh, maybe uh, like we have a national open school system right now where yes, any national open school system is there so anybody wants to go to uh, class 10 12 he can directly go without any formal education so this is these are some of the ways by which they ha they have to be uh, brought back to the system but if a person does not want to study mentally bent upon not studying then you cannot help it government cannot uh, force anybody to drink water from a well if he doesn't want to drink yeah nobody, nobody can do that 
any other questions before i give the formal vote of thanks audience any other question any more questions is there anything anyone else you can unmute no uh, i one or two uh, problems which could be there for uh, uh, this uh, policy would face would be orientation towards uh, multidisciplinary education as i was uh, talking about uh, because multidisciplinary education again it require uh, multidiscipline teachers as well so that could be a problem funding again as, as i mentioning you uh, it will be a great level of budgetary support is required uh, maybe 3 to 6% of gdp in education has to be there otherwise this cannot be very, it may not be successful in implementation because funding is has to be there and digital connectivity uh, because the, when you are uh, emphasizing more on online and digital education connectivity is a major issue in rural hinterland as well as in northeastern and hilly terrain areas so these are some of the challenges which i feel will be there in this policy yeah anything else sir otherwise we will close no, yes sir i just we have a small formality of vote of thanks before that i am putting on this sir. yes any one any questions from the uh, audience actually this was my first webinar for uh, uh, anybody so i think i tried my best i did not get time as well no no, no, no no i am going to analyze on that yeah, okay, so sir, thank you so we are going ahead had to the formal vote of thanks i i profusely thank dr anil kumar yadav for uh, accepting my invitation or invitation on behalf of the management we are interested uh, to you on this regard and you see sir uh, we, uh, i still uh, i'm awestruck that how many degrees you have got how many ugs in itself these are all questions i should not i mean it it, it is feeling i felt i should ask or should not ask but uh, it is a great achievement to see you and uh, great joy to privilege to have you as such an eminent personality uh, to have you in our show we will be contacting you for many such shows and i honestly heartfully say that you have done amazing uh, presentation thank you uh, so much thank you people, thank you people are all struck by your presentation because oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. they couldn't find uh, what to ask because uh, everything is uh, crystal clear whatever you made a present everything was crystal clear so no doubts on anything whatever you have presented then uh, on behalf of the director on behalf of principal sir entire item management we 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 profusely thank for giving this presentation and uh, anything uh, else if i forget i thank the management for supporting me to organize here the back end team my co convener my support staff of mba then uh, the staff right the technical team headed by uh, student activity center suresh kumar then uh, unify radio studio where i am just uh, standing by and uh, one young uh, champ uh, mr ajay is there uh, if, if i think he can show your face you can show face. come this side just come this side he is the man very nice namaste he is right he has done tremendous hard work for you our presentation is live on youtube okay sir okay you are you are from nepal na he is from nepal yes it is available forever and uh, no, he is from nepal you are saying Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Nepal, sir. I have studied Nepali, so I know as well. Oh, and he is our co-convener, Professor oh, hello, hello. Oh, Babu. Right. So I request hello. all the audience to once uh, keep your video on, so that we will take a screenshot. Audience, okay, please put your video on, because it is a formal to send it to the ACT. Please put your video on with your picture. All others, please. Please put on. Yes, all of you, please. Still, screen is vacant. The ACT is uh, asking for a screenshot of all the attendance videos. Okay, <laughs> very nice. So you can see the, all the faces of uh, partly yes, very, very uh, young and uh, very enthusiastic faces. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very uh, nice on my part. Lovely interaction, of course, I had with all of you. Thank yes, you, thank you, you so much. Videos, still, uh, yeah. you can see the audience videos. Still, some are okay. side from the cam camera. MBA students, professors, 
uh, from diverse yeah. from EC, then training placement, I find all, all, our deans, all. So we have taken, yes, yes, we can wish. Uh, any Anyone you want to greet our uh, uh, guest, you can greet, uh, just uh, tell a hi or regards, anything so on your video, you can put in. Uh, I wish you all the uh, graduates who are graduating uh, all the best and you join your profession of your choice and passion. Thank you, Professor. Uh, it is Thank a great so pleasure much, to it is a great pleasure, you know, the you know watching uh, video and listening your uh, you know the presentation. Uh, it's a great pleasure, you know. It's a great opportunity. All of us uh, keep getting touching with us. Uh, Thank you so much for your valuable inputs. This is Murali so Krishna. Admissions department. Thank you very much, Krishna. Thank yes, you. Professor Vishnumurthy, can uh, can you give an opinion on that, sir? Because we are uh, very much uh, eager to give your feedback, to listen to your feedback. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, yeah Krishna. Nice presentation. Yeah, in more informative session. If time permits, uh, more focus on higher education. But any anyway, right, sir. Right. You are given, sir. But still, lot to do for implementation. However, yeah. all our people got the information now. They will discuss and let you again discuss with you, sir. Thank you. Right, sir. Uh, nice presentation as well as useful presentation to all of us, sir. Thank you. Thank sir. you very much. Sir. Thank you, Murthy, sir. All the Patnaik, sir, and uh, all the team members for making this success. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you for your compliments. We are. Uh, we are blessed by a very good team of item who constantly support us in every aspect, taking this uh, gigantic task of uh, contacting a general manager from Punjab is not as small, but he has <laughs> obliged us very much. I thank Abhijit Datta who had made this happen. I think he is not there. Yeah, he, he was from Sikkim University. Yes, he is from Sikkim University. Yes, yes. He is my buddy. And oh, good. We all yeah. uh, study together. So, okay. everything is over. Sir, we shall take leave and put Yes, sir, thank you very much, sir, for I think this was my unique opportunity to interact. Maybe I'll try to improve upon as Mr. Vishnu Murthy, Dr. Vishnu Murthy suggested in future yes. webinars or seminars wherever I attend. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. And I wish everyone, the teachers, the faculty members, and the students, all the very best from my side, sir. Thank you. So, so it's namaste and goodbye to you first. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sir, yeah. putting off the screen, sir. Thank you so much. Right, goodbye. sir. Thank you. Thank God you. bless all. God bless all. Thank God you. bless you. Yeah. Sir, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Namaste. Keep, uh, be safe in this pandemic. I think you should be more careful about your health and uh, yes. well being. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. we will have more sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 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 Yes, sir. Professor Balram, anything you want to say? Very quickly. Oh, thank you, Patnaik, uh, and uh, you have arranged a very good, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, very good program. And thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, sir. So we're signing off, sir. Okay, thank okay, you. Sir. Thank you. Okay, bye.